Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Anchored in the Word. And if you're joining us today, I'd like to ask you to take out your Bibles and turn with me to James chapter 1. And we will be looking at verses 22 down to verse 25. Again, if you're joining us today, we want to welcome you this morning. And if you have a Bible, go ahead and take it and turn to James chapter 1. And we're looking at verses 22 to 25. Here's what the scriptures say, verse 21. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, not a doer, he's likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Uh, as we read this passage of scripture, I wanted to begin with a simple summary statement, and from there we'll look at some of the details. Uh, the summary of this passage is this. James wanted these Christians to have a blessed life. Therefore, he reminded them of the importance of letting the engrafted word produce a righteous living. And so he's just reminded them that God's word is something that has been grafted into them, and the purpose of God's word in them is to produce spiritual fruit. And so now he's going to talk about practically how a fruitful life is going to translate into being a blessed life. And he's going to continue that theme of how we're supposed to respond to the scripture. So we're going to kind of see that theme coming out in this passage as we look at the different observations. So our first observation is this. If we want to enjoy a blessed life, and when we talk about the blessed life, we're talking about a life that enjoys uh that's lived out the way that God intended us to live. I'll put it that way. If we want to enjoy the blessings of life lived as God intended us to live, then we must be doers of the word, not just hearers. In other words, it's not just about us coming in, co in contact with God's word and us being aware of God's word, but it's about us actually being changed by God's word, by us actually doing what God is telling us to do. And notice how he puts it in verse 22. He says, be doers not hearers only. In verse 25, he says this, Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. And here's the key. This man will be blessed in his deeds. In other words, a person who not just reads the Bible or goes to church or comes in contact with the scripture, but the scripture becomes a part of them, and it actually changes how they think, what they love, what they do. When the scriptures that have been engrafted into them begin to actually produce spiritual fruit, that person's life is going to be blessed. They're going to enjoy the satisfied, blessed, happy life that God intended. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't experience suffering and difficulty. I mean, cl clearly he's already talked about that. But they're living life as God intended them to live it. In fact, this is really parallel to what we read in Psalm chapter 1, or not Psalm 1, the first Psalm. In Psalm 1, verses 1 to 4, listen to what the psalmist says. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And here's the key. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And here is the result of the person who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Instead, they're delighting in the law of the Lord day and night. It says he'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Now what we see is that the psalmist is making this, this connection between those who take God's word they internalize it, they meditate upon it, it changes them. Instead of them being like chaff, something that just blows away because it's dried up, they're like a tree that's producing fruit, and it's, it's got vitality, it's alive, it's, it's, uh, it's what it's supposed to be. And so he says, if you want to have that kind of a life, a productive, God-centered, healthy life, then you have to be a person who's in God's Word. A second observation we see is this. If we're regularly exposed to God's word, but are unchanged by it, it's revealing that there is a self-deception in us. What we're saying is this. We have convinced ourselves somehow that because we come in contact with God's word, because we read it, because we go to church, then we're okay. And the truth is that if it's not actually changing us, in other words, 
we're not actually becoming more like Christ, we've deceived ourselves. There's something missing. Something's not right. And basically he puts it like this in verse 22. He that is a doer of the word and not a, it says, be a doer of the word, not hearers only. And they use the phrase deceiving your own selves. You know, it's like a person could say, well, I'm a good Christian. I read through the Bible every year. And, you know, there's a lot of Christians that don't read through the Bible every year. In fact, the number of Christians that regularly read the Bible on a daily basis is probably lower than what I'd like to think as a pastor. But just because somebody reads the scripture every day, just because they're faithfully attending their church, maybe they read through the entire Bible in a year, doesn't necessarily mean that they're becoming the kind of person they need to become. It's got to become a part of them. It's got to actually change them. And so he emphasizes that we are self-deceived if we're not being changed by the Bible. A third observation is this. If we're regularly exposed to the scripture but are unchanged by it, it also reveals that we are spiritually lazy. And he puts it like this in verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightforward forgetteth what manner of man he was. So he gives us an illustration. He says, you have a person who gets up in the morning, they look in the mirror, <laughs> they see that there are things that need to be addressed. They need to comb their hair. They need to shave. They need to prepare themselves for the day. And they see what's there. And instead of dealing with it, they just walk away and they forget about it. It's almost as if what I saw didn't do anything. It didn't change anything. And he said, when a person reads the Bible, as they open up the scripture, what it does is it reveals to them not just God and God's will, but who we are and how we fall short of it and how we can and how we need to be changed by God's word. And so when a person looks into the Bible and they see what it says, but then they walk away unchanged, they don't actually let it sink into their soul and change who they are. He says, <laughs> they're being lazy. They're like a person that looks in the, the mirror and then doesn't take care of what they see. They don't actually address the issue. And he's, he's emphasizing the fact that they forget. In other words, they're not valuing what they've been exposed to. They're not continually reminding themselves of what is there. They're not taking a purposeful, decisive step of action in light of what's been revealed. And so when we're not changed by the Bible, that's an indication that we have deceived ourselves and that we're being lazy in how we respond to the scripture. A fourth observation is this. God's blessings come to those who develop the spiritual a spiritually disciplined response to God's word. In other words, if I want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord, and I don't just mean his common grace blessings. I mean, God, God takes care of people who don't respect him and don't honor him and don't love him. There are people that never darken the door of a church, but God blesses them in many ways. But if I want to be blessed in the sense that what I do is done in the way that God intended to, to be done and can be enjoyed in the, the way that God wanted it to be enjoyed, then I have to be a person who's developing a spiritually disciplined response to God's word. Basically the same thing that's talked about in the first Psalm and what's being talked about in this passage. Notice how he puts it in verse 25. But whoso looketh and continueth therein, that's the key. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Now, notice what he's saying. These are parallel ideas. In other words, he's saying it's not just that he looks into the Bible, sees what it says, what it exposes. He goes beyond that. He, con he continues in what he sees. In other words, he sees it, he digests it, he meditates on it, he takes decisive action in the light of it. He says, I want to be changed by this. He's reading the scripture, he's meditating this on the scripture. In other words, there's a spiritual discipline there. The discipline of just opening the Bible on a day-by-day -day basis needs to be taking place. But we need to go beyond reading regularly. We need to actually meditate on what we're reading. We need to chew on it. We need to digest it. We need to think through it. We need to let it become a part of us. We need to let it nourish our souls. And that's what he's saying. If you want to be blessed by the Lord and what you do, then you have to go beyond just reading. You have to actually meditate on what you're reading. And then he doesn't forget it, but he actually does it. In other words, 
He's going to have to continually remind himself of what he's read. And he's going to have to take purposeful, decisive action on the basis of what he's seen. Okay, I've read this, so I purpose to do this. It's like when you sit under a sermon on a Sunday, and when the pastor gets done preaching, he says, okay, here's what God's told us to do. Here's how we need to respond. Will you respond in this way? Will you actually take this step of action? Will you actually ask the Lord to help you in this way? Will you purpose in this way? That's what a pastor does when he's preaching. That's what a Sunday school teacher does when they're teaching. They should come to the end of the lesson and say, God said this, here's what we need to do. And then we should say, well, let's do it. That's the point. We look, we continue, we don't forget, we do. That's what God wants. And I wanted to point out this as well in that statement that he makes. He says he's looking into the perfect law of liberty and he will be blessed in his deeds. Those two statements are very, very important. They stuck out to me this morning. In other words, if you want to live a life that is free, you need to live a life that is under the authority of God's word and what God says is right and wrong. And when we think about a law, we don't think about a law giving us liberty. We think about a law restricting our liberty. That's the way we tend to think of it. But if God's telling us to do something or to not do something that he knows is going to be destructive, that it's going to enslave us, that it's going to make our lives complex and it's going, to, it's going to wear us down and it's going to cause a lot of grief and trouble. If God's saying, don't do that because I know what it will do to you, then it's not a law that's restricting something that's good. It's encouraging us not to do something that's bad. It's very similar to when you know, this morning I was sitting upstairs, I had a fire going. I know we're getting to the end of the cool season, but I had a fire going and the front of that fireplace gets pretty hot. It's cast iron. And, you know, when one of my children, when they're really little, if they go up to that and they want to touch it, and I say, don't touch that, why am I telling them not to touch that? It's because I don't want them to burn their hand. In other words, that restriction, don't touch, was meant for their own good. In other words, it's not something that's supposed to keep them from a good thing. It's something that's to keep them from a bad thing. And so when we talk about God's law, he calls it a perfect, complete law of liberty. In other words, if you'll do what God says and you'll restrain yourself from doing things he says don't do them, it'll actually make your life less complicated. It will make your life more what God wants it to be. And you'll be in a position to be blessed by him because you've chosen to restrain yourself from things that are harmful and destructive. And he says this man will be blessed in his deed. In other words, when you do the things that you're doing, you're doing things that God wants you to do. You're doing things that are good and wholesome and productive, and you're doing them in the way that God wants you to do them. And so what's he going to do? He's going to bless those labors. So the idea is that God's blessings come to those who develop a spiritually disciplined response to Scripture. So the question you might be asking this morning is this. How do I take all this information? How do I just practically apply it today? Let me share with you a couple of very simple things that I think we all can do them, and these would be the practical responses that we should have to God's Word. The first thing I jotted down this morning is this. I must regularly read the Bible, and not just read it, but I need to read it carefully. And not just carefully, but I need to read it reflectively. In other words, I'm thinking about what it's saying about me, what it's saying about God, what it's saying about what needs to change in me. In other words, I'm reading the Bible as if I'm looking into the mirror. The mirror is showing things about me that I cannot see until I look into the mirror. And when I read the Bible, I'm reading it to see what it's saying about me that needs to change. And then I read it humbly. In other words, rather than like we heard yesterday, we need to be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. In other words, I listen and I'm going to not make excuse. I'm not going to indict God. I'm not going to become angry. I'm going to humble myself and respond to the authority of Scripture. We need to regularly read the Bible in that kind of a way. A second thing is this. I must write down what I've learned and how it applies to my daily walk. I don't know if you, if you regularly journal, but I would encourage you to consider getting a little notepad, a journal, and it's not that you're like a pastor who's preparing a sermon, but you're just jotting down a couple of simple things 
that you read in the morning that you say, I needed to remind myself of this and this and this. It's a part of the digestion process. Just write those things down on a three by five card and maybe you have a verse, maybe you have a statement and you just keep that with you throughout the day. Keep it in your pocket, keep it in your purse, uh, put it on uh, in the bathroom and, you know, on a, with a little sticky note, something like that. But it's there so that it's written down and you can kind of digest what you've learned. A, a third thing is this. I must ask God to help me change and grow and develop new habits based on what I've read. So every morning as I read the Bible, those simple little things that I've, that I've you know, been reminded of and that I've written down, I want to ask the Lord to help me in that day to focus on those areas of change. And it might be an interpersonal thing. It might just be a thing about my perspective. It could be a big thing. It could be a small thing. But I'm asking the Lord to help me to grow incrementally, to develop new habits based on what I've read. The fourth thing is this. I must constantly remind myself of what I've learned throughout the day. And so you got that three by five card. It's got a couple of verses jotted down. It's got a couple of thoughts that are jotted down. And, you know, a couple, couple times throughout the day, you just pull that out and you say, you know, I got to remember this. And what are you doing? You're constantly reminding yourself of scripture and you say, well, well, how is that going to change me? Well, let me tell you, if you develop those disciplines over a long period of time, it's amazing how God's word and God's truth will begin to become a part of you and it will change how you respond to circumstance and people. It will change how you think. It will shape your worldview. Just incremental change, a little at a time. Those simple steps can be a tremendous help to us. And the last thing I'll mention is this. I need to trust God to change me a little at a time through his word as I develop these spiritual disciplines. You know, change doesn't happen immediately. I, and I love to garden. I'm trying to get all that stuff going right now. And it's still a little on the cool side. But when you plant your garden, you know, you put the seed in the ground and you won't see a sprout for maybe a week. Unless it's really warm, then it doesn't even germinate that fast. And once that little plant starts growing, it takes so long. But, you know, once that plant really starts getting into a maturing stage, it grows quick and you can see amazing growth. But that doesn't happen immediately. It takes time. And it's the same way in our spiritual development. It takes time for us to grow. We have to trust God to do the work in us as we go through that process. I hope these things will be an encouragement to you this morning. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. And it's been good to see uh, each of you this morning. I hope you have a great morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we've had this morning to study your word together. I pray you take these simple truths, bless your people through them. Help us to take these things and purpose to, pro to, to properly apply them to our lives. We want to live in the light of your blessings. And so I pray that we would position ourselves and develop the disciplines necessary that you can do that work in us. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, it's been good to see each of you this morning. I hope that you have a great day, and we'll catch up with you next time. Bye now.